As a paper crafter, there's a really good chance that you have tried your hand at embossing paper and add it, added embossed paper pieces to your card projects. Now there's also a pretty good chance you have not tried the embossing technique I'm going to share with you today. It's very simple. You already have the materials to do it, but it adds an extra special touch to your projects. Let's take a look at it. So what we'll be trying today is double embossing, actually using two separate embossing folders and running through paper paper through our embossing machine two separate times to get a new and different look. Now, a while back I had shared a different double embossing technique. This is where you, you texture emboss, dry emboss paper with an embossing folder, and then do heat embossing over the top. Now, if you're interested in this technique, I can link the video in the video description below and you can take a look at that because that is another really neat double embossing technique. For today's embossing technique, let me share with you how we're going to do this. And then I have several card samples that I'll show you up close and give you some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. So what we want to do first is emboss our paper with one embossing folder. Now I've chosen the two I'm going to use. This is Time Worn Type, and this one is from the Wintry embossing folder set. There's two of them. So I've already embossed this piece of paper with Time Worn Type. Now, what I learned from this is you want to emboss the one that you want to be a little bit less noticeable. You want to do that one first. Save the one you want to be a little bit more noticeable for a second. So I want this greenery texture. I want this to be a little bit more noticeable. So I've already done the time war type. Let's go ahead and run this through a second time with this evergreen embossing for let's see how it comes out now you do also want to pay attention to which side you're running through you want to make sure that the embossed and debossed sides are the same so from your first embossing folder if it pressed the texture up in your paper and your embossed side is on the top you want to keep that the same the second time Otherwise, it's going to take a lot of that texture that got pressed up and it's going to press downwards if you end up switching those sides. Now, this is a smaller embossing folder. My paper is just a touch larger, larger sticking out on the side. So we'll focus on the rest of it. But let's take a look at this up close and hopefully you were able to see this. Now, if you look between the evergreen branches, you can see that extra texture down in between. Now, the ones I played around with, some of them are a lot more noticeable than others. So let's take a look at the samples that I've created. And actually, here, I'll give you a sample real quick of the difference in which embossing folder you use first and which one you use second. So on these two samples, I used the Hive and the other Wintry embossing folder. Now on this one, I used the Snowflake one first and the Hive second. This one, I used the Hive first and the Snowflake second. I'm gonna show you this to you up close. Do you see that Hive pattern mixed in with the Snowflakes? This is one of my favorites. I really like this one, but look how much different it looks if I do the Snowflake first and the Hive second. You can hardly even see the Snowflakes there. So that is just an example of why you want to order your embossing folders with that one. You want to be more noticeable. You want to do that one second. So let's take a look at a few samples here. And I'm going to save my favorites for here in a minute. Here is one I use the brick and mortar embossing folder and seashells. Brick and mortar first, seashells second. And you're going to notice on almost all of these, I used my blending brushes to add some color over the top. And we can actually do that here in a second with the sample I just created. And that those blending brushes help to accentuate those high and low spots even more. So here I added different colors with my blending brushes, but if you look close, you should be able to see that brick pattern in the background. And I just like that this adds even an even another element of texture. Texture just really adds a lot to cards. Now here is one. These are some past projects, but these are some I created with the Pretty Flowers embossing folder. Wanted to show you the samples first of how it looks normally. And then here is the one I created today. 
I actually use the timber embossing folder first, which is a wood grain. And the wood grain is going mostly up and down, if you can see that. After I use that timber embossing folder, then I went over top of it with that pretty flowers and added some color with my blending brushes, of course. But I thought that one turned out really neat. Here is another one, and I'm going to save my favorite for last. Now, this is another one I used that timber embossing folder with the wood grain going up and down. I used it first, and then I used this new fern embossing folder. This is some silver special, silver, silver specialty paper, if I could speak today. And I thought this turned out really neat as well. After I was done with it, I just cut it into strips and added them onto my card with a little tag greeting. Now here, let me look at our favorite one, my favorite one from today. This one uses the Time Worn Type and the Merry Melody embossing folders. I'll show you these first separately. So these are some cards I've made in the past with these two. The Time Worn Type, this old degraded print pattern, and then Merry Melody, which are two really neat ones. Here is a sample, my first sample that I tried. I did the Merry Melody embossing folder first and the Time Worn Type second. I didn't really like how this turned out. I couldn't see that music pattern as well as I wanted to, so I flipped my order around. I did the Time Worn Type first, the Merry Melody second, and here you can see the results I got on this one. I just love this one. I like that I see that degraded type in between the notes, but then I can very clearly see the notes as well. Now let's do a little blending quickly here. I'll bring the sample back in that we created. You can see how the blending brushes really add a lot and help to bring out that texture. And then we can dream about how we will use this on a card project. So I'll bring in some garden green ink have the blending brush I use with my green inks here. I like to dab that extra ink onto some scrap paper and then start coming in from the edge. Now, anytime you're blending, you can play around with the colors. If you are a little bit unsure of yourself, I suggest using a lighter color to start with. You can always come back in with a darker color if you want to. But if you get it too dark at first, it's pretty difficult to lighten that up. Now, sometimes with these raised patterns, typically I swirl in a, let's see, counterclockwise direction. But when you're doing that, the ink is only being picked up on the one side of those raised spots. So sometimes with my embossing, I like to then go back and swirl in a clockwise direction. That way you're hitting both sides of those raised edges and it really helps the color to pop a little bit more. So that's today's technique, double embossing. You'll have to try this out with the embossing folders in your collection. If you are interested in the products I used today, you can find links in the description below as, long, as well as a link to my blog where you'll see pictures of these cards that I shared today with some more details. Thanks so much for being here. Please subscribe if you haven't before. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.